trip out. Now, I don't know what to expect today, so I'm not going to say what I usually say, which is, you'll know what the video's about because you've clicked the thumbnail. Problem is, you'll know at this point, because you're watching it, <laughs> I've got no idea myself. I'm on Spotland Road in Rochdale at the moment, and I'm just heading out over the tops. I'll be honest, the weather's a bit, I don't know, I can't make its mind up. We've had sunshine, we've had thunder showers, oh, we've had it all. Oh, it's windy as well, so maybe a problem if I get somewhere and I wanted to fly the drone, because it is pretty windy. Uh, I'll be honest, the drone I've got, which is the Mini 3 Pro, is very good in winds, but sometimes you just wonder if it's worth the risk, innit? You know, if you've flown it out for about a mile and then it just drops out of the sky, you've got to go and get it, haven't you? <laughs> uh, that's if it survives the fall, so sometimes it's just not worth it. But then it's again, I might not see anything that's worth putting the drone up for. So, we'll see. I'm on my own today, I've got no pillion passenger, I've got no friends with me. I'm on my lonesome. Like I say, you may be laughing at me in a minute when I'm riding round in torrential rain. Sometimes on a bike, that's the way it is. So I'm just approaching uh, well, the area where Rochdale Football Club is. If you're a football fan, you'll probably know where that is. The roads are very wet. However, the temperature's pretty good. It's about 19 degrees, apparently. According to the bike, so it is warm. Happy July, yeah? We're in July and it's... I'm just put to shut the... Uh... We're in July and... Well, I'm not be honest, it's not summer weather, is it? And yet, we're hearing that in Europe, they're facing temperatures that they've never had before, up to 50 degrees C. I'm not saying I want it that warm, I mean, who does, but... Yeah, we could do with a little bit of sunshine. So the eagle eyes amongst you, which I'm sure there's a few, because obviously I, I broadcast to a very intelligent viewer, obviously. Um, you'll notice, you've probably seen the video by now, where I've put electric into the top box and I've also put this wireless device on, I don't know if you can see this um, It's just an extension of what I, I already had, it was the quad lock uh, phone mount Well I've taken a little blue tag that's synonymous with quad lock off and replaced it with this, which is a wireless charger, so when my phone's on the bike, it's wirelessly charging uh, which is great because I'm trying to figure up all these things for this long trip in Europe I've got coming and hopefully there'll be many more of them so all these things are designed to help me at some point in the future so obviously power to the top box will be great for charging power banks and what have you because the problem I have is when I travel I camp and I don't have electric so there's no chance of plugging in laptops and all that nonsense it's all got to be done by power banks now I've got three power banks, uh, a couple of which which are great for phones and you know that sort of thing. I've got one that's specifically made an anchor one, which is which charge laptops. So that'll be interesting. So that you know I've done it at home, it does work, but on the road charging from the bike and then charging the laptops and what have you at night, that'll be interesting to see how that works out. If it doesn't work out, there'll be no videos. <laughs> so, if the laptop's not working, there'll be nothing going on. That's, well, I'm sure that won't happen. I'll find a way. We always do, don't we? I dropped the bike on an earlier video. I can't believe how many views I got on that. You know, I crashed my bike. Um, thousands viewed that. My mate did say to me, you need to crash your bike every week, but <laughs> I'm not going down that path. Um, that wouldn't be good. Not good on my nervous system and not great on the bike either, so I can't do it every week. I'll be honest, I'm hoping I never do it again. But there's been a lot of people watching that. There must be people that search YouTube for bike crashes. Um, seems a bit odd to me, but... Yeah, last thing you need to see if you're a biker is other bikes crashing. It's like going on holiday and you're going on a plane, but before you go, you watch plane crashes. I should appreciate the views I suppose, you know. I just wish I got them on every video. It'd be great. I got a call last night off my mum. Um, 
the mum rang up and all in a panic. The brolly, the big brolly that she has in the garden, the garden brolly, had blown up onto the garage roof and she was in the right panic. So I had to drive round like the clappers and uh, help her out, put it away. She's not strong enough to pull it back down. Poor, poor bugger when I got there, she rolled onto a bit of string, stopping it blowing away. Not, not good at 80 year old. I'm just wondering whether to risk the drone. There is somewhere here that I've been dying to fly the drone for a while. I actually, on a previous video, I wanted to get down to, I forget what it's called now, but there's a, there's like a little uh, mill with a waterfall in it just over the side here. You can't get vehicles to it, it's up a private road. So I was wondering whether to park the bike somewhere and just fly the drone over. Cheesden Lum Mill was built in 1786. Although it still stood here, it was the first of 20 textile mills in the valley. In the beginning, this mill produced wool and treated it. By the 1800s, the mill was used for a full range of textiles. In its third phase, it was used for breaking up cotton waste. The cotton waste industry became very profitable during the 1860s, when the American Civil War meant an end to importing raw cotton into Britain. A number of mills in this valley profited from this. By 1880s, the 20 mills in this valley really started to struggle with competition from the cotton mills in Rochdale, Oldham and Manchester. So much so that before the turn of the century, Cheesden Lum Mill made a living just making oil lamp wicks, and the mill eventually closed in 1898. The mill over the years fell into ruin and a large part of it fell during storms and high winds in February 1990. Here's a photo taken in 1975 by Dr Neil Clifton before the wall fell due to the wind. However, Greater Manchester Archaeology Unit was able to restore some of it with funding from United Utilities and English Heritage. I can't believe the summer we're having. I'm convinced me that summer is a month long and winter is 11 months long. There's no such thing as spring and autumn in Britain. Not where I live anyway. There's only two seasons. What are you mourning for? The sun's out, you nugget. Oh, a dead squirrel. Not nice, is it? Not for the squirrel. A lot of people hate squirrels, don't they? Have a really bad thing with them. Tree rats, they call them. Kind of like them, me. I think they're cute. Coming up in the next video. Well, look what I've found. Speaking of squirrels. So, as you can see, the weather's changed. <laughs> Sorry to keep getting a big fat finger in.